Yeah, happy Sunday, everybody. My name is Inken, and I'm one of your hosts of the Lightware Collective. Um, I hope you are not annoyed, but there's some drilling going on. Just I heard something started. You you cannot hear it? Perfect. Amazing. I'm only hearing it. So I I really hope that you're having an amazing Sunday. But if that's not the case, I won't tell you that it's also okay. Because we are your safe space and um we, no matter where you're at on this Sunday or the following Sundays, because we show up every Sunday for you, um, we just love connecting with you and holding a safe space for you. We love to raise your vibe if it's not so high. Um, we love to like go deep with you. We love to inspire you to do your inner self-care because that's something that, yeah, um, we take a shower every day. We 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 do our things every day, right? But this is something um, we sometimes we need a reminder for that to do it. So um, I appreciate it a lot, and um, I know most of our participants um, show up for exactly this. And uh, if this is your first time, just um, welcome and and join and 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 allow um, to to be guided by us. Each session is unique. Um, has a unique topic at the moment we are in the we kicked off the soulful September which I think is, is really um, a beautiful topic to dive into and to practice soul care my dear dear friend Jenny will be our host and guide for today and she has not just uh, evolved into one of our core team members but has also um, become an amazing guide for all of you and I I really love each session that she has created um, and each time I know she's coming I'm excited for it but because I know that there's a lot of value for you in it and you just will feel her beautiful energy her light that is coming through when she's guiding you um, the special special thing is really what I feel coming through your voice and through your energy is this trust um, that is is one of your unique gifts, Jenny. I'm so happy you're here again. I'd like to hand it over to you with all my love, my dear friend. <laughs> and let's get started. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jenny. And today, I'm going to guide you with part five of the universal laws. The law of rhythm. Everything has a cycle and a rhythm. The law of rhythm states everything is cyclical and change is always right around the corner. There are cycles and rhythms to everything in this world. Life is not linear. It is full of cycles that have their own ebbs and flows. The law of rhythm. Earth orbits around the sun. The moon waxes and wanes. Fall precedes winter, which turns into spring and then summer. The tides rise and then recede. World economies peak and collapse. We have the stock market, the circle of life, circadian rhythm, even our breath flowing in and out. Each phase has a different purpose and function and together they are vital for the whole picture. Our world is in constant state of movement. Energy is always in motion. And these motions create cycles and patterns. You can think of this energy that causes a pendulum to swing in constant motion from one end to the other. To be interested in the changing of the seasons is a happier state of mind than to be hopelessly in love with the spring. This quote resonated with me to show that rhythm is everywhere and we should embrace it. This is the law. This law is the process of moving in and out of various phases of life or expecting seasons of change. Just like we learned in the law of polarity, we need the other phases or these other seasons to teach us that everything has its time. We tend to want everything in our own timeline, but we must exercise patience and trust the process. Our thoughts 
moods, emotions are ever-changing. A good mantra if we are sad, or perhaps in a low vibe state, is to say, this too shall pass. This creates a gradual shift up that vibrational emotional scale. It is equally important to remember this when things are going well. Understanding this law helps us cultivate a mindset of gratitude. We don't control these rhythms. When things are going well, appreciate it. When things are going not so well, learn from it. And take comfort knowing that better days will come. Learn to observe the ebb and flow of life with patience and know there is a time for everything. The ego mindset in all of us expects a constant leveling up and dislikes plateaus or moments of perceived setbacks. However, aligning with the law of rhythm means practicing patience and embracing grace in different seasons of our life. Setbacks become moments of valued reflection. Plateaus become restful and inevitable flows of abundance become more appreciated. The law of rhythm allows us to accept all phases of life with new perspective and understanding and more compassion to ourselves during the highs and lows of life. We learn that the law of relativity represents the need to be challenged. This law of rhythm is the timing of when these challenges phase into and out of our life. Your circumstances will always change and we can weather any storm because something better is always around the corner. The law of rhythm encourages us to see the beauty in each stage of life. Let us look at an example. Let's say you're moving to a new phase of life where you are focusing less on career and more on family. You could be ending a cycle of grinding deadlines and entering a cycle of rest. Or perhaps you're embracing a new career. You are entering a cycle of learning and growth. Do bad experiences then mean I'm a bad manifester? No, they don't. Even the best manifester will experience the full cycle of growth. We can manifest a challenging experience that's here to help us. And we can go through rough patches because it is for our highest good, even if we don't see it right now. Sometimes the things we desire require us to level up by going through some challenges. Down cycles are a part of our lessons of growth. Just like the seasons, sometimes a rough winter is preparing the foundation for a beautiful spring. All phases bring new growth. We all have a natural rhythm. What is your inner rhythm? Look within. Where may you be feeling a little off? Then lovingly ask yourself, what do I need to be in better sync? For example, if you're feeling a little run down and maybe it's better to give yourself a little rest instead of powering through. No matter where we are in life, there will always be seasons of growth. Challenge followed by accomplishment, sadness, followed by happiness, loss, followed by gain. This is part of our human experience. Everything is energy. Everything unfolds in perfect timing. Energy, it flows, it shifts, and it transforms. It vibes to its own flow and rhythm, bringing change to each new season. As you work to manifest the life of your dreams, Know this law is always about restoring balance, and it is working in our favor. The next law is the law of gender. The Kabbalion says the law of gender is in everything. Everything has masculine and feminine principles, yin and yang. The law of gender states that everything has masculine and feminine energies. 
They are complementary forces that cannot exist without one another. The law of gender exists throughout all of nature. Creation requires both yin and yang. Each one of us has both the masculine and feminine energies within us. And our goal in life is to strike balance with the two. Even though this law uses the word gender, it is referring to the two opposing types of energy, one that nurtures and one that drives. Masculine energy and feminine energy. Masculine would be the doing. Feminine would be the being. Our feeling of fulfillment requires us to pull from both energies in any situation. To achieve this balance, we may need to tap into the energy we are not as comfortable with. But first, what is the difference between masculine and feminine energy? Masculine is based in knowledge. It is application, taking action, logic. It is practicality, stability, willpower, focus, drive, and speaking up. It is clarity, goal-oriented, confident. It is strong, assertive, and disciplined. Boundaries, warrior, and structure, it is achieving. All these things are also referred to as left brain. The yang energy of the masculine includes much doing. Masculine energy is good about setting boundaries and is deeply connected to the warrior within. Divine masculine relishes in doing things that, and having adventures and making change and saying what's on your mind, speaking up or standing up for a cause. Masculine energy might be the part of you that makes the to-do list and directs the plan to get it done. If you are a natural leader, a problem solver, consider yourself highly motivated and driven. You enjoy stepping up and doing you're probably tapping into your masculine energy in a healthy way. Alternatively, though, if you are always on the go, you never allow downtime, you can't sit still, you have a fully booked calendar, you are a perfectionist or perhaps controlling, you might be tapping into masculine energy too much. Or if you struggle to stay motivated, or you're really impulsive or chaotic, or you feel lost, you might need to tap into your masculine energy more. Feminine energy is based in knowing. It is intuition, creativity, it is flow, passion, nurturing, authentic. It is loving, supportive, and open. It is connection, perspective, compassion. It is wise, pensive, heart-centered, accepting, forgiving, and collaborative. It is reflective, sensual, kind, and gentle. The yin energy of the feminine includes much being. Divine feminine energy embodies the nurturer, the healer, and the compassionate peacemaker. Feminine energy is soft, but fierce when necessary. It is loving and supportive and has the ability to listen. Feminine energy may be the part of you that allows your ideas to expand and unfold. When you feel safe or make someone else feel supported or you light up the room when you enter, you're tapping into your feminine energy in a healthy way. Alternatively though, if you struggle to find yourself or to execute or get motivated or make decisions or you become overwhelmed with the emotions of others, you might be tapping into your feminine energy too much. Or perhaps if you're feeling blocked, hypercritical, resistant, unfulfilled or disconnected, you might need to tap into your feminine energy more. Balancing our masculine and feminine allows us to be healthy individuals, better communicators, more kind, and more successful. So then how do I tell which 
of the energies is our dominant one. Well, if you're the person that people go for honest opinion in a safe space, if you are known for your integrity, or you root for the underdog, or if your superpower is connection and creativity, or perhaps you get stuck caring for someone else while you neglect your own needs, you're probably feminine energy dominant. Or maybe you're the person everyone goes to to step up and take control. You move mountains and you love dreaming big. Or you are a doer and you take action. Or perhaps you struggle with micromanaging others or you don't take criticism well, or you battle with perfectionism or burnout. You are probably masculine energy dominant. The masculine and feminine energies are meant to complement and support each other. Having a balance of masculine and feminine energy ensures the best of both productivity and creativity. So then how do we balance our masculine and feminine energies? If you feel you may be lacking in divine masculine, you could use things like affirmation. I am a warrior. I am a master of self-discipline. I see things clearly and objectively. I am confident. I know when to take action and I do. Or perhaps take risks with confidence. If you have great ideas, be willing to take risks and implement them. Hope for the best, but be unattached to the outcome. What is meant for you will be, trust the process. Start where you are, even if you don't feel 100% ready. Less internalization and more action. Recognize when you may be overthinking something and stand up for yourself. Even if you must set boundaries, stand up for what you believe in. So then how do we connect more with the divine feminine? Connecting with divine feminine within is slowing down and being rather than doing. Reclaim rest. Allow yourself to simply be. For example, sit in silence for five minutes. No music, no distractions. The power of the pause, we can align with grace and intuition. Embrace your senses, be sensual, light a favorite candle, or cook a fragrant meal, or soak in a warm bath listening to relaxing music. You get the idea. Journal. Journaling is reflective and taps into creativity. Practice self-love which means loving yourself as you are. Practice seeing yourself through the eyes of God, source, or the universe. Incorporate yin into your space. Prioritize lighting and color or textures that support a calming environment. Also, practice me coming. Connect with your inner self and intuition. This could be in morning prayer, in meditation, watching a sunrise or a sunset. Treat this time as a sacred place to honor your own divine light. One of the simplest ways of connecting with divine feminine is to spend time in nature, grounding or earthing, even five minutes of fresh air or gardening or a short walk barefoot in the grass can be enough to awaken your divine feminine. An important note though, Balance of masculine and feminine won't look the same for everyone. Balance does not have to be 50-50. Balance is sometimes 60-40, sometimes 70-30, or whatever is needed in any situation. So ask yourself, where do I feel when I'm pushing too much? Or perhaps ask, how can I meet, be more allowing? in my life. It may be helpful to write a list of these areas to look and see where I need to pick up the slack or I may need to just relax and be. Balance is about the long game. There are certain phases in life where we need to lean into one or the other energy. For example, if you're in school or if you're facing deadlines at work, 
perhaps you need to lean into the masculine energy. Or maybe you're facing a major life decision or a change. Perhaps lean into the feminine energy more. Understand we will go through phases and experiences where we ebb and flow between the two. To function at our peak, this law encourages us to use both our masculine and feminine energies. Learn to pull from both the masculine or the feminine as needed in any scenario. Pull from both the knowledge and knowing. Connect with your intuitive inner knowing so you can take aligned action. The one who masters both their masculine and their feminine energies will align themselves with the things they want to manifest. Are you using both your energies in your life? I'd like you to sit back in a comfy position and I will guide you on a little meditation. When you are ready, allow your eyes to close. Bring awareness to your breath, the actual physical sensations, feeling each breath as it comes in and goes out. Take a deep breath in and slowly exhale, letting the breath just be as it is, not changing it or regulating it, just allow it to flow easily. Again, take a nice deep breath in and exhale slowly. Thank you for being here to surrender these next few moments to the beauty of the now. Be present as I guide you. Imagine a beam of light from above, gently surrounding you like a warm, comforting hug. Let this light in through the top of your head. You will find yourself relaxing more. Your face is relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed and a gentle smile becomes you. Breathe in and breathe out. As this light moves through your body, your arms are relaxed, your hands are relaxed, your back is relaxed. This light travels through you, relaxing your legs and relaxing your feet. Now imagine this light reaching down to the center of the earth, grounding you. You are connected as above, so below. Allow the body to be still and sit with a sense of dignity, a sense of resolve, a sense of being complete, whole in this very moment with your posture reflecting this sense of wholeness. As you sit here, let an image form in your mind's eye of the most magnificent or beautiful mountain you know or have seen or can imagine. Let it gradually come into greater focus. And even if it doesn't come as a visual image, Allow the sense of this mountain and feeling its overall shape, its lofty peak or peaks high in the sky, the large base rooted in the bedrock of the earth crust, its steep or gently sloping sides. Noticing how massive it is, how solid, how unmoving, how beautiful, whether from afar or up close. Perhaps your mountain has snow blanketing its tops and trees, reaching down to the base or the rugged granite sides. There may be streams and waterfalls cascading down the slopes. There may be one peak or a series of peaks or with meadows and high lakes. Observe it 
noting its qualities. And when you feel ready, see if you can bring the mountain into your own body sitting here so that your body and the mountain in your mind's eye become one. As you sit here, you share in the massiveness and the stillness and the majesty of the mountain. You become the mountain. Grounded in the sitting posture, your head becomes the lofty peak, supported by the rest of the body and affording a panoramic view. Your shoulders and arms, the sides of the mountain, your buttocks and legs, the solid base rooted to your cushion or your chair. Experiencing in your body a sense of uplift from deep within your pelvis and spine. With each breath, as you continue sitting, become a little more a breathing mountain, alive and vital, yet unwavering in your inner stillness. Completely what you are, beyond words and thought, a centered, grounded, unmoving presence. As you sit here, become aware of the fact that as the sun travels across the sky, the light and shadows and colors are changing virtually moment by moment in the mountain stillness and the surface teems with life and activity, streams, melting snow, waterfalls, plants and wildlife. As the mountain sits, seeing, feeling how night follows day and day follows night, the bright warming sun, followed by the cool night sky studded with stars and the gradual dawning of a new day. Through it all, the mountain just sits, experiencing change in each moment, consistently changing, yet always just being itself. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another and as the weather changes moment by moment and day by day, calmness abiding all change. In summer, there is no snow on the mountain, except perhaps for the very peaks or in crags shielded from direct sunlight. In the fall, the mountain may wear a coat of brilliant fire colors. In winter, a blanket of snow and ice. In any season, it may find itself at times enshrouded in clouds or fog or pelted by freezing rain. People may come to see the mountain and comment on how beautiful it is or how it's not a good day to see the mountain, that it's too cloudy or rainy or foggy or dark. None of this matters to the mountain, which remains at all times its essential self. Clouds may come and clouds may go. Tourists may like it or not. The mountain's magnificence and beauty are not changed one bit by whether people see it or not, seen or unseen, in sun or clouds, boiling or frigid, day or night. It just sits, being itself. At times, visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain, and winds of an unthinkable magnitude. Through it all, the mountain sits. Spring comes, trees leaf out, flowers bloom in the high meadows and slopes. Birds sing in the trees once again. Streams overflow with the waters of melting snow. Through it all, the mountain continues to sit, unmoved by the weather, by what happens on its surface, by the world of appearances, remaining its essential self. Through the seasons, the changing weather, the activity ebbing and flowing on its surface, in the same way as we sit in meditation. We can learn to experience the mountain. We can embody the same central, unwavering stillness and groundedness 
in the face of everything that changes in our own lives over seconds, over hours, and over years. In our lives and in our meditation practice, we experience constantly the changing nature of mind and body and the outer world. And we have our own periods of light and darkness, of activity and inactivity, our moments of color and our moments of drabness. It's true that we experience storms of varying intensity and violence in the outer world and in our own minds and bodies, buffeted by high winds, by cold and rain. We endure periods of darkness and pain, as well as moments of joy and uplift. Even our appearance changes constantly, experiencing a weather of its own. By becoming the mountain in our meditation practice, we can link up with its strength and stability and adopt them for our own. We can use its energies to support our energy, to encounter each moment with mindfulness, equanimity, and clarity. It may help us to see that our thoughts and feelings, our preoccupations, our emotional storms and crisis, even the things that happen to us are very much like the weather on the mountain. Yes, we tend to take it all personally, but its strongest characteristic is impersonal. The weather of our own lives is not to be ignored or denied. It is to be encountered, honored, felt, and known for what it is and held in awareness. And in holding it in this way, we come to know a deeper sense, silence and stillness and wisdom. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in tranquility. Breathe in inner peace. And exhale slowly. As you come back to this moment, be at ease. You are prepared to welcome whatever comes your way. Gently wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers and take another breath. And when you are ready, open your eyes. <laughs>